Now, intrauterine infection is such a vast topic that I thought I'll concentrate on one particular intrauterine infection and we'll go ahead with a case related to that. So this is a primary gravida mother. She's detected to have VDRL positive at the time of delivery. Her VDRL titer is 1 is to 4. She's been asymptomatic. She's had no genital lesions. They've screened her for hepatitis B and HIV. Both are negative. Baby is born full term. Birth weight was 2.25 kg. On examination, everything's fell, uh, fine. So now uh, I was called in to see this mother and child and uh, the question was what should we do now? Question is do we wait and watch? Do we do VDRL in the child? Do we treat the child for congenital syphilis? Is this a false positive VDRL and just ignore the report? Or do we do a TPHA in the mother? So here let's interpret the VDRL first. VDRL is a non-triponymal test. These antibodies appear 4 to 8 weeks after an infection and positive VDRL is present in almost 70% of the patients with a Shanker and 100% with a secondary or latent disease. What we talk about significant VDRL is 1 is to 8 titer positive. This mother had 1 is to 4. So this 1 is to 4 is not suggestive of syphilis. So if we interpret her report, it either tells us this is a false positive test or probably she's been treated during pregnancy and the titer has fallen. So we need to interpret the result. Cause of false positive VDRL, it could be secondary to viral infections like infectious mononucleosis, hepatitis, varicella, measles. Lymphoma, TB can also cause a false positive VDRL. Malaria, endocarditis. Pregnancy itself can cause false positive VDRL. Or it could be a lab error. So how do we exclude that this is a false positive VDRL? We need to do the TPHA in the mother. So triponymal antibody test. VDRL is non-triponymal. So it will disappear over a period of time, whereas triponymal is very specific for triponema. And if that is positive, it remains positive for the life. So in this mother, the triponymal antibody test was positive. So we went back to the history. I asked the mother, uh, have you been tested earlier in the pregnancy? And she said that she had been tested in the second trimester. She got back her file. And that time her titer was 1 is to 32. And she had received one dose of benzathine penicillin here. So definitely this mother had syphilis during her second trimester. And she had been treated for it. Now is this mother adequately treated? We need to know that because if this mother is adequately treated, probably she won't pass on the syphilis to the child. So the treatment of syphilis in adults is basically 2.4 million units of benzathine penicillin, one dose intramuscularly. And how do you assess uh, response to therapy is you do a titer and look after four weeks whether it's fallen by fourfold. If it's falling by fourfold, you know, need, know that the mother has, uh, has responded. Usually any patient who's treated for syphilis, the VDRL will become negative over a period of time and usually in one maximum two years, the VDRL titer should be negative. So you need to monitor these patients over a period of time. So in this mother, when we assess, VDRL was positive 1 is to, 320, 1 is to 32, second trimester. At the time of delivery, it's fallen to 1 is to 4. So there has been a decrease by fourfold. So she seems to be adequately treated. The question arises is, even though she is adequately treated, could the child still have congenital syphilis? And should we treat this child for congenital syphilis? So what should we do in the child? Should we do a VDRL and if it is positive, should we treat the child? So we did two things you need to do. You need to do a VDRL in the child and you need to check for physical evidence of congenital syphilis. Just doing VDRL does not suggest congenital syphilis. So if this child has a positive VDRL, it doesn't mean anything to me. I need to know the titer. These uh, non-triponymal antibodies can be passively transferred from the mother to the child. So if the mother is positive, the child could have a positive VDRL. What is important to know is whether this VDRL is fourfold higher than the mother's titer. That means the baby is producing its own antibodies. If the baby is producing the own antibodies, then you need to treat it. These passively transferred maternal uh, VDRL antibodies would disappear by six months to one year. So even if you have a child who has a positive VDRL, you've not treated the child, you need to follow up the titer over a period of time. If the titer is more than fourfold, treat the child for congenital syphilis. If you could do IgM antibodies for, for triponema pallidum, you must do it. 
it suggests congenital syphilis. Now, uh, Triponema pallidum anti IgM is not currently available with us. But if you could do that, because IgM is not transmitted from the placenta. So if you can do that, and if it's positive, it tells you congenital syphilis. The question is now, suppose we did a VDRL here and we found it positive. It still doesn't tell us anything much because the mother was 1 is to 32, fell down to 1 is to 4. Suppose this child's title is 1 is to 12, we won't be able to interpret it. So what should we look for in clinical examination in this particular child? This is just a newborn, day 1, day 2 of life. Yeah, so what is important is to know the time of infection. Now syphilis can be transmitted in utero at the time of delivery, if there are genital lesions, then the contact with the genital lesions can cause syphilis. The transmission ranges from 70 to 100 percent in primary syphilis, 40 percent for latent syphilis, and all late latent disease only 10 percent will get it. So, if the mother has got syphilis currently newly acquired, chances that she'll transmit to the child is very very high. Most infants are asymptomatic at birth. So if you're going to examine the child on day one or day two, you're not going to pick up anything. Even early syphilis signs would take three weeks to come up. And late syphilis takes much later. It's almost after two years that you look for signs of late syphilis. The earliest signs that you would pick up in congenital syphilis is very similar to secondary syphilis in adults. So you're going to see snuffles, persistent rhinitis. I don't think any child who's less than two months should have cold. So any child who's less than two months and starts getting cold, you must suspect syphilis. Hepatosplenomegaly, generalized lymphadenopathy, a rash which occurs exclusively on the palms and soles. Initially it is maculopapilla, vesicular bullus, and then desquamation starts occurring. So if you have a child, mother comes to you with just rash on the hands and feet, two month old, think of syphilis. Glomerular nephritis leading to nephrotic syndrome, Radiological, we look at diaphyseal periostitis. And after three months, you could get pseudoparalysis because of flaccid paralysis of the upper limbs and the lower limbs, painful joints. That's the one that causes pseudoparalysis. So this is a picture. This is a picture of a child who had come to me. The, this child, you can see the desquamation of the hands and feet. This child had come to me at three months of age with only this particular presentation, only desquamation. And the moment we did a VDR, the title was 1 is to almost 64. So, when you see this kind of a rash, think of syphilis. This is the diaphyseal periostitis. You can see the double diaphysis, the double line over here. I'm pointing out with the arrow. So, you can see the double line that is occurring. This is classically of syphilis. If you see this, these two, one year near the cortex and one year. So, if you see these double lines, this is diaphyseal periostitis. Now the late manifestations, they don't occur, you don't suspect in children less than two years, they occur beyond that. Late manifestations, though it causes what, what is known as disfiguring lesions, they are not contagious. And the sites commonly involved are the bone, the neurological and the teeth. Among the neurological, eighth nerve deafness. If I have a child who comes to me with deafness, the first thing that I do is CMV, sensory neural deafness. And the second thing that you have to do is VDRL. Pro probably we've missed out syphilis, and this is a late onset syphilis. Tabes dorsalis is another thing that will present. The teeth are pretty much involved. You get notched incisors, you get mulberry molars, fissuring around the mouth. So you have these raggeds around the mouth. You do get chorioretinitis or interstitial keratitis. Because of that uh, persistent snuffles in the child, you're going to get raggeds or saddle nose and sabre tibia. The tibia becomes bent like a sword. It's known as sabre for a sword. So it becomes sword-shaped tibia. So these are the clinical manifestations of late onset syphilis. We should not be catching a child at this stage because most of these things are irreversible. So if we have somebody who's got eighth nerve deafness, we cannot reverse that. Or sabre tibia will not reverse if you treat syphilis. So we need to identify syphilis in the early onset. Now we come back to our case. If this child is day two, we've not found anything on examination. So we have to depend on VDRL. So if this VDRL is positive, what should we do? If it's negative, we are going to just leave it alone. When do we consider treatment? Now there are criteria. Just because a VDRL is positive does not mean it is congenital syphilis. As I told you, it could be maternally transmitted antibodies. So when would you treat if the child is symptomatic? 
If the maternal titer has increased fourfold, here the maternal titer had decreased fourfold, the infant titer is more than fourfold than that of the maternal titer. The maternal syphilis was inadequately treated. Suppose somebody just gave doxycycline, inadequately treated during pregnancy, or nobody followed up her VDRL to know whether she had a fourfold decrease in the titer. Maternal syphilis was treated with non penicillin regimen. And after treatment with appropriate penicillin regimen, the decrease in the VDRL titers did not occur, what we expected. Or the treatment in the mother was just one month prior to delivery. If it was just one month prior to delivery, the effect of penicillin would not be there and there's still high chance that the syphilis would have transmitted. So if you have these particular features in a child who's positive VDRL and asymptomatic, you may treat. If symptomatic, definitely you have to treat. The so next question that arises is, when should you do a CSF VDRL? So every child with a positive VDRL does not require CSF VDRL. Only when you are considering that this is a presumed congenital syphilis or a proven congenital syphilis, then you would do a CSF VDRL. So anybody who fits into that criteria where you are going to treat for congenital syphilis, do a CSF VDRL. And what is the treatment of congenital syphilis? You did give a 10-day course of aqueous penicillin G, 50,000 units per kg per dose every 12 hours during the first 7 days of life and then every 8 hours. You give it for 10 days or you can give procaine penicillin single dose daily, 50,000 units per kg IM for 10 days. So 10-day course of penicillin is what is required. Now our patient, we come back to our patient, VDRL was negative in our patient. Mother had been adequately treated with a penicillin drug in the second trimester. She had a fourfold decrease in the maternal titer from 1 is to 32 to 1 is to 4. So we did not do any further investigations in this child. But suppose this child had congenital syphilis and we treated the child with penicillin. What should be the follow-up of this patient? So we are coming to a hypothetical situation where suppose he had congenital syphilis and we need to follow him up. How should we do? We need to follow up this child at 3 months, 6 months, 12 months. We need to do a VDRL and document that the titer is decreasing fourfold. By one year, maximum by two years, the titer should become negative. By one year, if the titer has not become negative or the titer has started rising again, then we need to repeat the CSF VDRL and again treat the child with a 10-day course of penicillin. So just one treatment schedule over 10 days we've given and then we don't follow up, that's not correct. We'll need to follow up these children for at least one to two years. So the key message that I want to give is whenever you have a child who is born to a VDRL positive mother, first thing is assess clinically for congenital syphilis, do the VDRL in the baby, check for adequacy of treatment in the mother during pregnancy, whether she received penicillin, proper doses, whether there was a fourfold decrease in the maternal titers, hopefully she was treated one month before delivery, not in the last one month, she had to be treated much earlier. Whenever you suspect congenital syphilis in the child, presumed or proven, you need to do a CSF VDRL. Treat with a 10-day course of penicillin. Follow up this child for a year to document a fourfold decrease in the titer or a negative VDRL. So congenital syphilis is something that is a little complicated, but I think, I hope I have made it a little more clear to all of you all.